Well, good morning. We got a text from Pastor John, and he said, uh, Good morning, Lincoln. You are, are loved and appreciated. Uh, Jim Dunn and I are having a great time. They're up in Alaska and are making great progress with some important mission. Uh, I know that it will be a special morning of worship. It has been. Uh, the uh, computer hasn't been working, and uh, my car wasn't working and getting here, and it's, it's, been, it's been very special. Uh, he says, we are good and, and tired, and God is good. God is good. And we are here and can worship him this morning, and... Uh, Thankful for that. Well, I was uh, 10 years old in elementary school at the school carnival, and it was just about time for me to go home, and I was out of tickets to play the games. And at that moment, my eye caught this little plastic dinosaur that I knew would make the perfect addition to my dinosaur collection at home. But I was out of tickets. And so what was I to do? Well, I waited till the guy who was running the game was distracted, and then I took it, and I put it in my pocket, and I walked away, and uh, went home, added it to my dinosaur collection, and I looked at it, and I knew in my heart that that dinosaur was stolen, and every time I saw that or played with it, it was tainted in my eyes. It, it was a tainted pterodactyl. I saw that thing. That, that is stolen. I did not earn that. And I eventually threw it away to try and right my wrong. Um, I don't think that that worked. Um, but that was my first and most vivid memory of breaking the eighth commandment. Thou shall not steal. And of all the commandments, it, it really seems like the most straightforward. In fact, in Hebrew, it's just two words. Don't steal. Don't steal. It's very simple. Don't rip people off. Don't take what is not yours. And actually, in staff meeting, we spent... A little time talking about the different ways that we can steal. Um, Tom had the most ideas. I'm not sure why. Um, but, you know, maybe I should start with a confession of my own. I, I stole a couple times last Tuesday night on the basketball court. Um, I, was, I mean, it's taking candy from babies. It was, no, actually, the, the truth is I'm not good at basketball, and I was getting stolen from, and, and I tried to tell him the Eighth Commandment, but it didn't work. I said, you know, God said don't steal from me, but um, there's a lot of different ways that we can steal. We can steal a ball in sports. We can steal someone's property. We could steal another person's thunder. We could steal by lying on our taxes. We could steal someone's spot in line. A tradesman could steal from someone by charging more than they really should, or a mechanic by misdiagnosing a car on purpose, like my car wasn't working, maybe he'll try and tell me I need windshield wiper you know, fluid or turn signal fluid or something I don't, you know, that doesn't exist, and I'm like, okay, I don't know about cars, I guess you're right. Um, and he could steal from me when we go to get our car fixed. We could steal a person's innocence, we could steal time from an employer by not working hard during the hours we're supposed to be working. Or our employer could steal from us by expecting us to work more than we're paid for. We could steal music by not paying for it. We could steal someone's Wi-Fi by hacking their password and taking the internet that they're paying for. We could steal... TV and streaming, uh, actually, I, I, read, I read that the most pirated movie, this is kind of sad, the most pirated movie when it came out around 10 years ago was The Passion of the Christ. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. There's something, there's something wrong with that. Um, even Christians can steal. Um, Alyssa and I were on vacation last weekend, and we saw a couple using the hotel internet um, and they desperately needed to use it because their identity had been stolen. And so they had to go on to the government website and fill out these, these not-so-fun forms and all that. Um, actually, some have made a good case that all of the commandments could be summed up in this one commandment. Murder is the stealing of another person's life. Adultery is the stealing of another person's spouse. Coveting is the desire to steal what belongs to another person. 
giving false testimony is stealing justice away from another person and stealing away their reputation. Worshiping God, uh, worshiping other gods is stealing away from God what rightly belongs to him and the glory and the worship that's deserved to him alone, so on and so forth. And as I thought about it, there's actually a lot of ways that you and I have been stolen from spiritually. There's many ways that we have been stolen because if you think about it, how did we really get into the mess of this world that we're living in in the first place? It came about through stealing. God said, look, all of these trees in the garden, they belong to you. You can eat freely from them except for this one tree. Don't take from it. And we stole what God said did not belong to us. And as a result of that, Satan stole from us what God had freely given to us. And Adam and Eve, they allowed their their reputation to be stolen. They allowed their innocence to be stolen, their righteousness to be stolen, their clean conscience, and the good and the beautiful life that God wanted to freely give them. That, That old saying that cheaters only cheat themselves, it certainly rings true there. They were trying to get ahead and instead ended up so far behind. And so we face this temptation in this world that we're living in. We've probably all felt it at some point in time that if we're ever to get back what we were created to experience, if we're ever to get ahead in life, we're going to have to steal it. We're going to have to take it. We're going to have to take life into our own hands. And I, I believe the devil makes us feel that way. I mean, we look around and And uh, we look at the world and we say, if we're ever to have joy, if we're ever to get ahead, if we're ever going to have security, we're going to have to cut some corners sometime. We're going to have to steal and use some dishonest methods to, to get what we need. And when we do that, I find that we often have an equal amount of justifications for why stealing is okay. Why, why taking what we are taking uh, is, is okay. Uh, we have this ends justify the, the means sort of a mentality. Um, you know, I'm, I'm stealing answers off of another person's test because they're my friend and they don't mind anyway. Um, I'm stealing from my boss because eh, he's, kind of, he's kind of a jerk and deserves it. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm just taking, that's justice. That's not stealing. Um, I'm stealing music and movies because those, those industries, they're corrupt and they make so much money anyway, they're not going to miss it. Um, I used to work at a restaurant and um, we would get tips and you're supposed to, when you plock out, clock out, report how many tips that you made so that they'll deduct that from your taxes and put that into the system. And I, at the time, I, I just uh, you know, graduated from a Christian place and I, I was... I was putting in my, my full taxes, and the other servers would look at me like, what are you doing? Like, you're, you're not supposed to do that. Like, you only have to put in $5, and they would be taking home $100, and they would really shame me for putting the full amount in when I clocked out. I think because it made them feel bad about themselves, but there was justification going on um, in their minds, thinking, you know, you're only stealing from the government, and they're not really going to miss it. Um, besides, everyone else is doing it, so why shouldn't you do it? And it's so easy to base right and wrong based off of our own justifications or, you know, just off of what we think. But God makes it very clear in the Eighth Commandment. He says, don't steal. Don't steal. Don't participate in any form of stealing. And we know in our own conscience that God is right in telling us that. We know like I looked at that tainted Tyrannosaurus Rex or whatever dinosaur that happened to be, that was wrong that I took that. And stealing never pays off in the end. And we, as we look around the world or we're faced with the temptation to steal, we might say, how, how can I get ahead in life? How do I, when everyone else is stealing and cutting corners, how do I not do the same? How do I resist the temptation not to steal myself. And as we look into God's word, God gives us alternatives to stealing. And I would like to look at three of those alternatives with you from his word this morning. And the result that happens is we follow God's instruction. First, God tells us instead of stealing, instead of stealing, God wants us to trust in him. Instead of stealing, God calls us to trust in him. When we steal, we're basically choosing not to trust in God. 
We're telling him, I don't believe that you could provide for me in an honest way. I don't believe you know my needs, and I don't believe that you could give me what I need through some sort of honest mean. I believe I need to take and to steal. And as we look throughout Scripture, we see a God who provides in miraculous ways. He created this world out of nothing. I mean, he's not lacking on resources. Then when, when a man needed a wife, he took a rib out of him and made a woman. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive provision. You know, Adam's like, thanks, God. You know, he's not missing that rib. And then when the Israelites journeyed through the wilderness, God reminded them, he says, for 40 years I led you through the wilderness, yet your clothes did not wear out nor did the sandals on your feet. The Lord continually provided through, for them in the wilderness over and over again. David says in the 23rd Psalm, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. I don't need anything when I have the Lord as my shepherd. Psalm 34:10 says, even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Elisha and a poor widow would tell you how the Lord provided oil in vessel after vessel so that the, the widow could have money enough to, for her son and her to live on. He created oil out of nothing to the point to where they couldn't even find another container to store it in. I don't know about you, but the Lord has a very good track record in my own life of providing when I place my trust in him, I, I see the Lord providing for me over and over again. It, always ha it hasn't always been what I wanted or when I wanted it or the way that I wanted it, but it's been what I needed. And I, I thank God it hasn't always been what I wanted or when I wanted it. But as I've trusted in the Lord, I've seen him provide for my needs over and over again. He is a faithful provider. Jesus reminds us to go to God and to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Trust in him to meet your needs and look to him to be a provider. He is a very capable provider. Psalm 50 says, it, this is the Lord speaking. He says, I have no need of a bull from your stall or goats from your pens. For every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the insects on the fields, they're all, in the fields, they're all mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is mine and all that is in it. God has everything that we need and is very capable to provide for us. And he calls us to trust in him. To just cast our worries aside and, and put our trust in him to provide for us. And he will do that for us in an honest way if our trust is in him. So instead of stealing, God calls us to trust in him as our provider. And secondly, instead of stealing... God calls us to work. You know, lest we think that trusting in God is just doing nothing, one of the ways that God will provide for us is by giving us work to do. Ephesians 4.28 says, Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands. So God wants us to use our hands and the skills that he's given us to do produce useful, fruitful work to contribute to society and be uh, a beneficial part of society in contributing with, our, with the work of our hands. And when you work as a school teacher, you benefit the next generation by pouring into their lives and you help raise up the next generation and you do a good work with your hands. When you work as a first responder and you're there on the scenes to help people in need, you do a good work with the work of your hands. You earn a wage for yourself and you help other people. When you work as an accountant, you help people steal from the government. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, you help people in their taxes and help people to think about things that they don't want to think about. Let's be honest. When you're a builder, you, you do something useful with your hands and you help people to have shelter and something to live in. And when you work in the home, you help to raise a godly family and you do something useful with your hands. And that's, that's all good and pleasing to the Lord. That's what he wants us to be doing. And as followers of Christ, we should prayerfully ask the Lord, what do you want me to do 
vocationally? What do you want, what have you called me to do? What is the work that I can do with my hands to bring you glory? What are the skills and the talents that you've given me? How can I serve others and contribute to society, do something fruitful, earn a wage, provide for my family, and help others along the way? That's good and that's pleasing and that's part of God's system and his plan. And when we we steal, we subvert that whole process and we just take from others who are working and contributing to that process. And God says, I want you to be a part of that process. I want you to use your hands to do good things and to help other people and to earn your own wages. And that brings him glory when we do that. So instead of stealing, God wants us to trust him and he wants us to work. And thirdly, instead of stealing, God wants us to be generous. God actually wants us to do the opposite of stealing. He wants us to give to others generously. Ephesians 4.28 continues on and he says, Paul writes, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Following Christ leads us to the opposite of stealing. It, it, it leads us to this position where we can give to those who are truly in need. And we live in a world of great need. And we should ask the Lord, how can I meet the needs of other people? I mean, we live in a world where people around the world, they don't, they don't have education. They don't have clean drinking water and food. Many people have been sold into sex trafficking, their lives stolen away from them. There's a lot of children in the world who don't have parents and don't have a family of their own. And God says, how, how can you as my followers meet their needs? I don't pretend to know how we can meet all of those needs. There's a lot of organizations that we can partner with, but we should each be asking the Lord, how can I meet the needs that, that you want me to meet? And I believe it starts with our heart in praying, Lord, would you take me from being a greedy person to a giver? Would you help me not to just turn a blind eye or be complacent or apathetic about the many needs that are in this world and instead see myself as someone who can meet the needs of others? And a great and wonderful thing happens when we follow God's instructions, when we choose not to steal, but instead to trust in him to work and to give. When we choose to obey this commandment that God is giving us here in the eighth commandment, we actually choose to reflect who God is and what he has done for us. Because if we think about trusting and working and giving to those in needs, that reflects exactly what Jesus Christ has done for us. I mean, Jesus Christ lived a life where he modeled perfect trust in God. And then he worked on our behalf to fulfill the law so that we could be made righteous in God's sight. And then he gives us freely eternal life to anyone who would receive that. He gives generously to those who are spiritually desperate and need his righteousness. And as his followers, we should seek to live a life that reflects all that Christ has done in our own lives. And when, when others look at our lives and they say, you know, why are you at peace when everyone else is worried? And we could say, because the Lord is my provider. And my trust is in him. And I know that he knows my needs. And I know that he's capable of meeting my needs. And that gives me peace. Why do you want to work when everyone else is just trying to freeload? Because the Lord has given me good purpose. And he's given me skills. And he's given me talents. And I want to bring him glory. And I want to help other people. Why are you generous when everyone else is just trying to get everything that they can, as much as they can for themselves? Well, because God has been so generous to me, even giving me his own son, the least that I could do is consider how I could be generous to others. And when we live that kind of life, it reflects the heart of God and who he is. And when we choose to steal, sadly, man, that reflects, that reflects the devil. That reflects Satan. Satan, the one who convinced us to try and steal from God what didn't belong to us, the one who himself stole, tried to steal the glory that only belonged to God and become God himself. And I don't want my life to reflect him in even the smallest measure. I want my life to reflect Christ and all that he has done for us. And as Christians, we should desire that. 
And thank God, because of all that we've been given in Christ, we can be free in God's provision. We can trust in a God like that. We can use the skills that he's given us to bring him glory, and we can generously give to others, knowing that God will always provide for us. We are set free to be generous in Christ. John Stott says, he said, only Christ can change the burglar into a benefactor. And Christ can take us from stealing to sharing. I love what one other pastor, Kevin DeYoung, he, be, he beautifully wrote on stealing. He says, he said, Jesus breathed his last breath on a cross between two thieves, two absolute violators of the eighth commandment. They were robbers, bandits, rabble-rousers, thieves. But one of them turned to Jesus in the midst of dying, and he said, we're receiving our due rewards for our deeds. But Jesus, would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And Jesus said, truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. And in that dying breath, Jesus gave that man a promise of an inheritance that he perhaps foolishly wasted his whole life trying to find. In that one moment, Jesus reoriented the thief on the cross, helping him to see that only in Christ would he finally find what he was looking for. In, in Christ, we have been given more than we could ever steal We've been given an inheritance that can never be stolen from us. And that should free us to live a certain kind of life here and now. That should humble us and transform our hearts. Say, I've been given more than I ever deserve. And God has been so generously, you know, gracious with me in giving me his own son. I don't need to steal when I have a God like that. I'm humbled by a passage in Philippians, Philippians 9 that, sorry, Philippians 4 uh, 15 through 17 that Paul writes he says as you know you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia no other church did this even when I was in Thessalonica you sent help more than once I don't say this because I want a gift from you rather I want you to receive the reward for your kindness it's amazing that Paul wants this church to give, not for his sake, but for their sake. Because he knows that there's a reward in being a giver. He knows that there is a reward in being generous. And Jesus himself said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. It's, it's not a blessed life to, to steal. It's a blessed life to give and to be generous and to follow the Lord through trust, through the work of our hands, and through generously giving to others. The Lord says don't steal. That's his commandment to us. And may we obey him out of love. Let's pray.